Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, 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 welcome to Celebrating Act 2. <laughs> Art wanted me to be very welcoming, so I think I just did that. Art Kirsch and I are with, of course, the Velk we're very welcome to have, did I say that right? <laughs> Michelle Fabrega, thank you. I, I better quit while I'm ahead. Yeah, wait, <laughs> you, you're like about 10 seconds beyond quitting, but that's good. So <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, uh, because uh, I happen to uh, see a list of the topics that we might be discussing today. And this next one, um, I was thinking about, uh, and the answer is no, <laughs> if you if you want to believe my source. But it came from Harry and Sally, where uh, Harry was asked, uh, or Sally asked uh, uh, if they could just be friends. And he said, no, uh, a, a man and a woman can't just be friends. They always want to have uh, sex. And so the answer is, Harry's uh, answer was no. But I think that you might have a slightly different take on it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to give you a chance to give us the, the correct answer. Uh, but anyway, can so the question is, can heterosexual uh, 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 friends just be friends? What yeah, say I, you? I, I what say agree. you, love and relationship coach <laughs> Michelle Fabrica? Yeah, yeah. Well, I totally remember that movie when Harry met Sally, and um, yeah, it was a funny scene. Um, well, what was interesting is that I think that there is something. Um, a lot of people have beliefs about what's okay and what's not okay. So I thought I would just let's just look at this together. I mean, I don't have, you know, strong opinion about this per se. I think everybody has to kind of navigate themselves. But anyway, when I dove into this topic, it was very exciting because I discovered there was an article in Scientific American about how men and women experience opposite sex friendships. So men tend to be much more attracted to their female uh, friends than vice versa. And also men are more likely to think that the women are also attracted to them, which is kind of misguided because a lot of women are blind to the fact that their male friends are attracted to them. And they assumed that the lack of attraction was mutual. Now, granted, this was done with undergraduates, but I just think it's interesting that there's like kind of a different estimation of how much, you know, they, they assume mutuality, but men assume that they're mutually attracted to each other and women assume they're mutually not attracted to each other. Wow. So, um, yeah. And, Right, which is kind of what the movie talks about, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it that that's one of the differences between men and women. We we think differently. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have different emotions as well. So, wait, you're, so we, Michelle, you're saying that you're. And I know it's a generalization that uh, if uh, men and women are uh, in a friendly relationship, or at least starting out as a friendly relationship, that the man generally has more romantic issues on his mind than the woman approaching that same relationship as a general rule, not as a an absolute. Yes, that's what the research said in this particular study is uh -huh. that men are more likely to, to be attracted to their um, female friend and assume it's mutual. And the well, women are ah. more likely to not be attracted and see it as a friendship and assume that's mutual. So there's just the disconnect, right? Mm. So um, I, now let me think about this. Does that mean that Billy Crystal's Harry was right? Fine for men, him. men always see the possibility of a romantic relationship, and women don't always see that. Yeah, I mean, always is a strong word, but I think <laughs> generally, you know, he there was a he had this, you know, there was a pulse that he he was reading there for sure. Yeah. And the other thing that's another point that I found in this article, which is also fascinating, is that men are more likely to see um, or view romantic attraction as a benefit of an opposite sex relationship. And this discrepancy increased as men got older. So they appreciated the attraction, um, whereas, um, you know, younger men... So, so anyway, there was something like... Um, men on the younger end of the spectrum were four times more likely than females to report romantic attraction as a benefit. Whereas older men 
or 10 times more likely to find romantic attraction with a woman as a benefit in the, in the friendship as a woman would find it. Yeah. So it's like they enjoy the juice or the, you know, excitement of that. Yeah. I, I wonder if that's because of the, and I know this is also a, a big generality, but that's because of the general um, male proclivity to be the aggressor in, in, in a romantic relationship. Mm. Is that yeah. women are 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 more often than not feeling uh, defensive. Uh, you know, mm. do do I want this guy hitting on me or not? You know, I like him. Oh, he can hit on me. Oh, this guy's not for me. I wish he'd quit hitting on me. You know, it's <laughs> it's a matter, and, and I think that's the the basic uh, that goes to the basic core of the difference between men and women in in. Uh, dating, ro relationships, you know, romantic relationships. Yeah, no, I think there definitely is an evolutionary, um, you know, uh, impact right there of men wanting to, you know, scatter their seed and women, you know, it's like, well, getting pregnant is, you know, a lot of resources involved in that. But but what I want to take this information with is let, let's look at this. Like, so basically there's like a trade-off here, right? So there's obviously in terms of a opposite sex relationship, for heterosexual you know, men and women, there's a richness, right? In a learning and experience and perspectives to be gained from having friendships with the opposite sex and a broader sense of connection and closeness, right? When we have close relationships. And of course, on the flip side, there's some risks involved. Like, could this friendship develop into something bigger? And if so, is there a problem with this? Yeah. So those are the two kind of trade-offs that I think each person kind of needs to navigate. But I think that as long, in my opinion, as long as there's no deception involved, that everyone is clear on what is happening and what's not happening, you know, what's on the table in terms of, you know, what's available to engage in, and then then all is well. And I think sure. there can be something super energizing about, um, you know, the flirtation, the possibility, and we can bring that energy home to our relationship that we're, you know, that we're in. And um, I'm thinking of a person I knew, like, you know, she had a major crush on her personal trainer. And, um, you know, she never crossed the line with him, but, you know, it sure made her more motivated to work out. And her <laughs> husband thought it was awesome. You know, she, he right. enjoyed her wanting to work out and, and the energy, and you know, he knew about it. And um, it's like, so let, we can bring that kind of, you know, if we're open to it, share that with our partners, that we have this attraction. Yeah. And that it's not yeah, going I, anywhere. I, 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 think, I think you're going to a bridge too far on that. I don't think. I don't think I would. And, and, um, yeah, it just depends on your relationship, right? And so I'm right. not saying a blanket, you know, this or right. that, but but there are choices here to be made, and we well, all get it to seems to me. It seems to that. me. It seems to me that so far Harry was right. Not only was he right, <laughs> I forget about the uh, the the wonderful scene in the delicatessen, um, uh, which has nothing oh. to do with what we're talking about here. But uh, in, the end, the, in the orgasm? end, you mean the fake in the orgasm? end. Harry was adamant that uh, they they couldn't just be friends. She was adamant that they either could be or or she just couldn't be friends with him. But in the end, they <laughs> married. They got married. So yeah. so for Harry and Sally, and Sally, it was right uh, that they can't just be friends. Do you have? But but maybe they can be. So what's your final word on this, Michelle? Well. Actually, you know, my final word is really it it just depends. It depends on each person, you know, both people in the relationship um, or the person who's, you know, not in the relationship, right, but has friendship with um, somebody who's partnered. But I just, I do think there's a deep cost to kind of um, shielding oneself from friendships that might threaten your relationship because, you know, loneliness, isolation, when we put all of our connection and intimacy in the eggs, let's say, in one basket, you know, we're kind of putting ourselves at risk. And so, like I said, the perspective and viewpoint you get from another uh, friendship can really can really broaden your world. So I think, I mean, the key basically is that, you know, if you think your partner is overly controlling then of what you can do and how you can relate to other people, um, you know, that's something to look at too, right? So um, it, it's just, it's basically, I'm bringing the issue here and it's up for people to, Talk about talk about with your partners. Talk about with your friends. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. 
it, it seems to me that Harry was right, but he was also wrong in, in the <laughs> sense that um, you, you the, if you don't cross the line, you can be friends. There's a, there's a line there between friendship and romance. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think there are a lot of people who are friends with their former partners, right? I mean, I have a, a man that I was involved with for four years and we're still friends and, you know, we cross the line <laughs> and yeah. it's kind of a beautiful thing. And he's happily in a new relationship and, you know, I'm with Dave as as I talk about regularly. Anyway, you know, so it's just, it just depends. It really depends. But I think there's, if we, I just think that to, to limit ourselves too much in friendships is, is not always a great thing. So everybody's got to kind of navigate the territory that, that's right for them and their partners. Any last thoughts? Uh, no, I think, I mean, you know, I talk about another, in another topic, we're going to talk about sovereignty and relationships. And I think this has a kind of a, a related issue around that. Like what, um, anyway, we'll get into that soon. Sovereignty. Mm. Like who's in charge? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> like let's, take a breath. Wait, let's not still thunder <laughs> from another episode. Uh, okay. so next time uh, we'll talk about sovereignty. Next time. Thank you, Michelle. It's always fascinating your take on things. And that, uh, like most things in life, not everything is black and white. There's shades of gray. And so uh, we know that we're friends with you. And we're not we're not ashamed of that. And we have just lots of fun together. So uh, thank you for that. And that proves that uh, we can have a relationship <laughs> with uh, uh, somebody of the opposite sex and just have a thoroughly enjoyable uh, uh, relationship based upon our professional backgrounds. So thank you for that. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.